A few more parts have come in for the turbo that is going on my Chevy Cruze daily driver. I'm going to show you what came in and I'm also going to kind of start mocking things up. So let's go ahead and do this. One of the parts that came in is this oil catch can. So I'm gonna add that to, I believe it has to go on the, the PCV. And it's a pretty neat little deal, pretty inexpensive. Has a little dipstick and all that fun stuff. The hose is crap that comes with it, so I'll have to get some decent hose. And then came with a crap ton of fittings, even though there's only two holes for fittings. We'll figure out where I'm going to place this and possibly just go ahead and install it in the system before I put the turbo on. The turbo is going to be the last thing that will go on because I still have to figure out my tuning situation. The T3 turbo flange finally came in. I did order the wrong one, but there's that flange, which makes up perfectly with the turbo so we're good there also got a couple weld bungs for the O2 sensor and not only that for a wideband sensor which I'll be installing It'll be a lot of fun and then we got some weld L's that came in so here's a, a couple 90 degree long radius stainless steel elbows here this piece here is essentially a two inch T. So I have two more T's that are coming in. And this piece, what I plan to do is just kind of squeeze this down. So that way it fits a little bit closer to the radius of the flange. I'll pinch that in, which will extend this part of the stainless steel fitting. And once I've got this kind of tack welded on there, I'll use a hammer to make it kind of conform to this flange. So that way it's a nice smooth transition. The reason I decided to, to get this, what I'm gonna do is just cut this down the center or, or kind of chop this as small as I can to go on to what is essentially a, what do they call it? A, a log style manifold, that's all I'm doing. I'm not gonna get super crazy with it, but you know, I'm gonna do it in stainless steel, so I only have to do it once. But this essentially will allow the flow of it to be nice and smooth rather than building the log, cutting a hole in it, and then welding this to it. So this will create a little bit smoother of a transition. What we'll end up with is, here's the, the top of the, the flange here. The two elbows will go on. It'll, there'll be two one inch T's that, that will go here. I'll have to, to trim it down, those T's as well and it will just make a log style manifold. And this guy will go on there, whichever angle, if I decide to, to mount it above or below, I'm thinking it's gonna have to go up above because there's really not any room without it hitting the catalytic converter or the AC plumbing. The studs also came in. This will help keep those from backing out. And this showed up today, only one of them. I don't know why they keep they sent me three separate shipments when all I got was a, a couple long radius 90 degrees, two of these T's and then the bigger T. So I'm waiting on one more T and then I'll end up cutting this down, this as well, so that way these are all centered, smashing these parts of the, the pipe up. This is stainless steel. If I can find or, or borrow a TIG welder, I'll try to TIG weld it. Otherwise, who knows, I, I might stick weld it or, or MIG weld it. I'm not too concerned about this being a super nice looking setup. If I can TIG weld it, that'd be great, that'd be ideal. But stick welding will do just fine. I'm more familiar with that and MIG welding, but we'll see about the TIG welding of that. And then I got this J-Bin that came in. And this is going to be the downpipe exhaust, whatever you want to call it. I'll probably end up cutting it here. Seeing how this part 
hopefully that's long enough for it to, we'll see. I, I need it to go down up underneath the car. I'll probably end up welding the bung up at the top. And then I also need a place to put in the wideband sensor when I do get one. I still, that's one of the things I still need to get. Lovely little gem. It's just a really cheap $10 boost gauge. And it goes all the way up to 35. I doubt I'll ever be going up that high. And starting off, it'll probably be eight pounds of boost. It's an HKS blow off valve. And it did come with a fitting already. Again, I wanted to do a minimal amount of welding. And then there's the, the O-ring and the little fittings. I'll take it, this is probably a one-way filter, some sort of diaphragm. But here is the blow-off valve. Here's the HKS blow-off valve. I'm not sure if this thing is a genuine part. I thought they had like the three little fins on it, but it says HKS on it and it's HKS box. So I assume so. I don't know what all the models look like, but it's a nice looking little piece. Again, going with the murdered out kind of theme. Here's what I'll be mounting the wastegate to rather than welding that flange on. So of course I had to get some extra couplers to go along with it. Kind of did a little bit of a test mock-up fit, if you will. The only thing I don't really care about this piece is the lip just isn't quite as big as the, the lip on the charge pipes that came with the intercooler kit. However, if this doesn't hold up for whatever reason, I'll just remove it and then add a bigger bead, but I think it might be fine. I guess we'll see. Last but not least, I got a tin and weld in bung fitting for the oil return i'll obviously have to remove the oil pan drill a hole and weld this in i might try the aluminum brazing method and see how that works out otherwise i'm gonna have to figure out some sort of way to weld this aluminum up or i might just scrap this idea and get a 10 and bung and just drill a hole and, and thread the hole for the 10 and fitting we'll see we shall see got the front bumper off I'm thinking the inner cooler will just kind of sit up right back here behind this front crash bar a little something like so have it hang down just enough so that way it's in the opening gets plenty of air I'll have to make some brackets in which I have some galvanized strap steel I believe is what it's called so I should be able to easily make some brackets, just bend this over a little bit. Should be plenty strong enough. Could possibly even strap the bottom of it, but we'll see. The intake pipe will come out pretty easily. There's only a couple little bushings down here at the bottom that release this thing up. And I'll run the intercooler piping through where the current air filter box is at. Here's the little snorkel for it, just some fresh cool air. This can just come out and we'll just run it up into this part here, up through the hood and down to the throttle body. With the turbo living here, my only concern is this radiator hose and then the, the AC hose. I do have some wrap for it, however, things are gonna be a little tight. All this will be gone out of the way, obviously, but you know, it's still a pretty tight spot. Also have to manage to put an air filter here as well and then route the exhaust and down piping down. What's that? My only other hurdle, so to speak, I guess it's not too bad. You run the other side of the pipe up through there. It's gonna be a pretty tight fit as well. My question to you guys are, I had, there's a few hoses and a couple things I'm a little unsure about. Let me show you. There's this hose coming off of the air breather box. I'm not sure what that's for. I imagine it's probably for the VAP system. My oil catch can, I think I'll put here. It's a pretty small catch can, so that's plenty of room. It's my understanding that I need to hook it up to 
the PCV valve, which with these cars here, it's built into the valve cover. But my concern is this is a piece of plastic. It's not a rubber hose or anything like that. So how would you go about hooking up your oil catch can? And also, the only vacuum line I'm really finding is coming from the brake booster, and it's a hard plastic line as well. I talked to one of my buddies, and he is saying to just drill into the intake, but I don't want to take the intake off. That's more than I care to do at the moment, at least. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, how you would go about hooking up a boost gauge. Where, where would you do that on this particular car here? Now, what the hell is this? What do I do with that once I got everything all sorted out? I just about have all the parts in. There's a couple more things that I'm waiting on. A couple of couplers, really, some couplers. Really didn't take into consideration that I need one going from a two inch to two and a half inch from the turbo to the actual intercooler piping or charge pipe, whatever you want to call it. I'm waiting on that. A couple other little odds and ends. And that will be it for all of the mechanical pieces. I'm still debating whether or not I want to pull the trigger on HP tuners or just go somewhere here local and have them tune it for this low boost. And then in the meantime, I can get the HP tuners later and kind of play around with the car. So that way when I do move it on to stage two and put a built block in there, I can turn the boost up and I'll be able to do that myself. Thanks for tuning in guys, I really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. If you wanna follow along, subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and I will continue to vlog my experience putting a turbocharger on my daily driver. Peace out with you, peace out.